elected uh, officials, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for my wife and myself to be here with you uh, this afternoon and to bring you a message from Western Canada, what has happened to us and what has happened to organic farms with the introduction of GMOs in 1996. Four crops were introduced at that time, GMOs. But I should maybe also mention that my wife and I, for over 50 years, were research developers in grub seeds, developing new varieties and uh, for our soil and climatic conditions, but most of all, for disease control. I've had a long role in agriculture. I was also a member of parliament, in the provincial parliament. I was a government member. And in my role, I had agriculture. So GMOs, when GMOs were introduced, I had a great interest of what and possibly could happen. I'm here to tell you briefly what has happened when you introduce GMOs and what happens to organic farmers. As I said, four crops, but the main crops in Canada at that time was rough seed and soya. In the United States, they also had uh, GMO cotton and GMO maize. It did not take long to find out what would happen, only one year if you ever introduced GMOs. First of all, what I'm going to say will alarm you as an organic farmer and I really rightly so because this is what has happened to us in Canada in organic farming. First of all, in rough seed, we no longer have any pure rough seed left in Canada. It is all GMOs. We no longer have any pure soya left in Canada. It is all GMOs. Those are two crops organic farmers no longer can raise in Canada because of the contamination. Several important points. Number one, there is absolutely, absolutely no coexistence. If you introduce GMOs, and I don't care what crop it is, it will contaminate your neighbor and neighbors far away. So there is no coexistence because you cannot control pollen flow, pollen blown in the wind, or by bees. Or as we say also, direct seed movement. Seeds blown in the wind transportation by farmers and so on. I often think back to two, three years ago, some of the times I came to Germany, and I would hear the officials from companies, especially Monsanto, say, you can contain it. There is no way you can contain pollen flow, as I said, by wind or by bees and so on, or by transportation. So there is absolutely no containment. You introduce GMOs in your country, and it's going to be over and over for the organic farmer, as has happened to us in Canada. There is another important reason that we have not allowed any more new GMOs in Canada for the last 14 crop years. And that is how long we've had GMOs. So now we know not what can happen or may happen, but what does happen if you ever introduce GMOs. First of all, yields go down drastically. And not a lower nutritional content or protein content, content. But worst of all, with GMOs, you will use at least three times more chemicals, more highly, more powerful chemicals than ever before because of a new mutant GMO super wheat. I think another very important point for organic farmers is this. GMOs do not only affect the plant you put it into, and I'll give you the example of rough seed. Rough seed comes from the brassica family. And in that family, you have very close cousins as well as distant cousins. Radishes, turnips, cauliflower, mustard, uh, broccoli, and so on. And through cross-pollination of the GMO gene from GMO rough seed, it now has entered also into those market garden crops, making more crops organic farmers no longer can produce. So you no longer have a choice left if you ever introduce GMOs. Uh, so you, there is, as I said, between GMOs and organic farmers or conventional farmers, you cannot have that. It only becomes GMOs. Now you might feel that what I've said is very strong, but can you imagine the hundreds or thousands of organic farmers no longer have a choice in those crops? Can it happen to you here? 
Yes, I think it can. It happened us to us in North America, and I'm sure the contamination will be the same here. So, again, never allow to introduce GMOs. Where did some of the contamination first come from? It had come from our universities, it came from government test spots because they did it in the open. They said you could contain it and it could not. And so now our country is contaminated with GMOs in those two crops that I mentioned. I think I've spoken long enough, but I try and impress you. There's many other issues now that have risen with GMOs. First of all, economic issue has been devastating. We cannot sell our rapeseed to many countries of the world. Another industry that has been really hurt is the honey industry. We produce a lot of honey in Western Canada. We cannot sell it to many countries of the world now because our honey now also is contaminated with GMOs. A bee doesn't know which flower is GMO and which is not. Another industry that has been hurt. Soil. We cannot sell our soil to many countries of the world. And we are an exporting nation. So you can imagine what, it, what the farmers have gone through with, with the loss of crops. So again, no, no containment, no coexistence. But the worst of all, I think, is that once you introduce it, we do not know if you ever can bring it back again. I've asked this question from scientists all over the world, and the answer is no. Now, I haven't come here to your country to tell you what to do. I've come here as a Canadian farmer to tell you what has happened to us when GMOs were introduced 14 years ago. We now are paying a heavy price for that. You still have a choice here in your country and in Europe. We don't have that choice left in North America because of the contamination. So if you introduce GMOs in your country, you cannot say in two years from now you did not know what would happen. And we didn't have anybody to come and tell us in Canada at that time. And as I said, we're paying a heavy price for it now. So the choice is yours. And the choice you make today will not only affect you here today, but will affect generations to come. Our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. So it's very important to get all the information you can. And that's one of the reasons my wife and I are in Europe again and in your country here to bring you this message. Again, thank you for the opportunity for giving you this sharp presentation. There's many issues now that have risen in closing. The economic issue I mentioned, the health issue, the environmental issue, the law issue, and especially the issue of farmers' rights being taken away. If you are contaminated, you no longer have the right to use your seeds or plants under patent law, and that's another area you really have to look closely at your patent law. GMOs were never ever meant to feed a hungry or starving world. GMOs were meant by corporations to get total control of the seed supply and the food supply, and that is what has happened to us in North America. In closing, Monsanto now is the largest seed company in the world. And what is more dangerous about that, they've been buying up organic seed companies in North America, making it very difficult now, especially on the West Coast, for organic farmers to get certain types of organic seed. That's how they're trying to get total control of the organic farmers. So with that, thank you very much for the opportunity to bring you this short message. Don't go 